even the atoms, even the even the protons, like everything gets crushed out of existence. Okay, so that's the picture. That, those are called tidal forces that crush you out of existence. So there are these event horizons. So uh, for black holes, and we can see we're actually getting data from black holes, but we are outside a black hole. Okay, that's called the event horizon. Now, in Stephen Hawking, then showed that these the surfaces, these black holes, are actually uh, emit what's called black body radiation. They actually have a certain temperature, okay, and emit black hole radiation. So, uh, and this, uh, he discovered this in kind of the mid 70s, and it's been developed. And this is like a major thing in, in, in physics today about the the uh, the Hawking radiation coming from these uh, from these uh, black hole surfaces. Now it turns out that with the discovery of dark energy, what ha what's happening is that our three-dimensional space is, exp is accelerating and expansion so much that, that if we send out a light signal out into space, space is going to accelerate away from the light signal, and the light signal can't catch up. So what happens is in our future, we have a, a horizon that's in some ways similar to the black hole event horizon. It's called our future event horizon. It's as though, you can think of it as this, imagine you're a, there's molasses, and you're a bug caught in the molasses, and you're in a spherical glass bottle, glass shell. Okay, it's like we have, it's like we are trapped inside this, this future event horizon. Uh, now, it turns out that it would take us an infinite amount of time, if we, were be, if we were mortal creatures and we could live forever, we keep approaching, we never actually get there. It's a limiting case. There's what's called conformal time, and in conformal time we can we actually get there, but it's it's like a it's just a mathematical trick. So this this uh, this it turns out this shell, the spherical future shell that's surrounding us, we're trapped inside it like a bug in a bottle. It turns out it takes us an infinite time to get there, but it's only a finite distance away at any time. Finite distance away because the space expands. We'd like we it's like an Escher. You have to look at these. Uh, it's a boundary. Of some sort. It's a, it's a kind of a boundary. It's kind of a, a, a boundary, uh, and it it we it would take us an infinite amount of time to actually reach it, but in a certain sense, only a finite distance from us. And this is called the the the, the Desider horizon. It's I mean, it's it's, it's it's counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive. But this is the this, this is the non Euclidean geometry of curved space time of Einstein's general theory of relativity. You're not in Kansas anymore. You know, it's like the Wizard of Oz. And what you think, you know, your instincts about space and time and geometry get totally screwed up here. Okay, but you know, we physicists kind of know how to think about it. That takes a while to learn how to think about it. And a lot of amateur crackpots who think they know better than Einstein, they never actually get it. And that's why it's a lot of foolish. Most of the stuff you read on the web, you know, be careful. Uh, a lot of it is a lot, of, a lot of nonsense. Not even wrong nonsense. But in any case, be that as it may, because we have a local guy who's, uh, <laughs> we'll go into that. Called well, Mr. well, speaking C. of that, have you gotten any, any positive feedback uh, from, from other reputable members of the community? Not yet. Regarding this? Well, Not yet. It was well, only published. I mean, it hasn't even it hasn't been been formally published, published yet. It hasn't even published yet. And by the way, this is going to be published in the Proceedings Dice 2008 European Institute of Physics. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the conference held in uh, Castiglioncello, Italy, September 22nd through uh, September 28, 2008. So the coast of Tuscany, Roger Penrose was there, a lot of uh, uh, Hagen Kleinert was there, you know, a lot of uh, interesting people were there. The top people in the field. Well, uh, uh, some of the top people, there, but it was more uh, uh, cross-disciplinary. There were people in the brain science there as well. Um, and uh, But be that as it may, it was a, like an international meeting. Uh, now, okay, so where are we at now? Okay, so we're living inside this shell, but this shell is in our infinite time future, but it's only a finite distance away. That's one of the things about... Uh, but we also have what's called a past particle horizon. We have two kinds of horizons. We have horizons in our past and horizons in our future. Now, it turns out that if we calculate, and in fact now there's, there's a young lady named Tamara Davis. She's an Australian uh, cosmologist. She worked with Paul Davies. Paul Davies, who uh, won the Templeton Prize for a, a million-dollar prize as big as the Nobel. Who's prize. written some wonderful popular but books? Some wonderful on physics. popular books, and he's he's one of the pioneers in all this these horizon effects and this Hawking radiation stuff. Because it turns out there's what's called the Unruh effect as well. If you happen to be accelerate through ordinary flat space time, 
you also get a horizon. It's called the Rinla horizon. And you will see black body radiation. You will see thermal radiation coming toward you with a temperature, which temp with, with a temperature that depends upon how, how on your acceleration rate. See, that's what's going on. So that acceleration is a very tricky thing in, uh, in Einstein's theory of general relativity. It's not, much, it's not the way, it's not quite like a Porsche accelerating. I mean, it, it, it has very uh, tricky properties. So um, now Tamara Davis, what Tamara Davis did, and her thesis was only published like in 2004, okay, uh, what she did was to actually take the data the actual what's called precision cosmological data, the type 1a supernovae data, the COBE data, the WMAP data, and she actually put them on a computer and she actually computed what do Einstein's field equations say given our data input, what do they say? And she came up with, with, with a, a beautiful computer simulations and even Lenny Suskind, I'm not sure if Lenny Suskind knows this stuff, even in his, uh, that even some of the pundits don't really know about. They, they're not aware of this. It's a PhD thesis. Okay. Fortunately, uh, when I was preparing the paper with Creon uh, for publication, we had a, a, a January 20th deadline, and we had to get to it because, you know, and what happens, Creon found Tamara's thesis. In general, not many people know about it. It totally revolutionizes everything. Because, for example, Lenny Suskind and other people, when they talk about uh, the horizon. Is she doing Feynman-like diagrams? No, no, but she's just doing general relativity, general. but with the computer, she's she's doing, you know, like a numerical relativity. She's actually plugging in data into the Einstein's okay. cosmological field equation. Okay. It's all classical. It's, it's and just saw, seeing what... Solid, you know, solid you know, conventional she is, she's, physics. She, she's doing general standard cosmology, but with, with the data, and she's getting a picture of the entire history of our universe from the Big Bang of actually the moment of inflation, I call the alpha point, to the omega point, you know, you know from, from our, our past 13.7 billion years ago, when our particular little pocket universe expanded, we have what's called a, we live inside, see, the, the, we have a past sphere too, uh, that we see from light coming from the past, that we can only see a certain spherical distance away from it. So how does her picture fit with your picture? Well, it turns out it fits perfectly, and this was like an amazing synchronicity that Creon found, because I didn't know, when I gave the talk in Italy, I didn't know about Tamara Davis's thing, and I was talking about stuff coming from the future, but, but uh, you know, that has to be a future rise. I discussed it personally with Bernard Carr. Bernard Carr is a cosmology professor at the University of London. He was Stephen Hawking's student and personal assistant at Cambridge in the 70s, uh, and Bernard uh, also, it turns out has an interest in paranormal phenomena and published a paper in June 2008 in the proceedings of the uh, British Psychical Research Society. We talked about retrocausality, where the future influences the past, and how uh, I have certain ideas about this applied to cosmology. But this is before Tamara Davis, so it all came like, you know, almost like destiny, we call it the destiny matrix working, uh, that Creon Levitt happened to find this paper. Now, what this paper shows, if you actually take the data, Okay, and if you look at the area of this spherical shell in our future that's surrounding us, you look at the area, now it turns out there's something called uh, Jacob Beckenstein working with Hawking, it turns out the area of that future sphere is also uh, has what's called thermodynamic entropy. And it turns out that area of that future sphere that we'll never get to, but it's a finite distance away, the area of that future sphere predicts exactly the observed number of the dark energy density. Really? Yeah. It turns out it's the, it's the one over the area. It's basically the dark energy density proportional to the reciprocal area of that future sphere. Okay? That gives us the observed dark energy density we're seeing today. Almost exactly. It gives us